What, which one is better? <laughs> they're kind of on the fence. You get the 11%. Yeah. Oh, man. They're on the fence. About 11% is 11 more than zero, which is always the response of, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. And that's exactly. There you go. All right, almost one in t or a little above one in ten. All right. Either way, though, looking like uh, the uh, community is favoring Rise Nation a little bit. Not, yeah, but not by too much, which is understandable. I mean, both teams should be pretty close, but I would give it up to Rise Nation just a bit in terms of that a bit of an edge. So, ladies and gentlemen, clubhouse, of course, daytime between Rise Nation and Orglas. Let's head into game. All right, let's do it. Let's do this. Well. Are we going in guns blazing or are we going in sneaky peeky like? You never know. Some teams do like to go in guns blazing first round. See how the uh, operator bands go and whether or not that'll affect that. I've definitely seen a fair bit of uh, Maestro band today. Some Blackbeard as well, but that was on Coastline. Glass also we had seen band earlier, but definitely not going to be played here. And that is coming out against Rise Nation from Orglis. See with Rise want to go with though, and there goes Maverick, which oh, is makes sense. not a surprise at all for this map. This is probably the map Maverick's most banned on. Villa close second. Yeah, which is odd because yesterday he wasn't banned. What when happens? Secret play G two. Odd. Hmm. Is that gonna be the new lion? All right, Mira will be removed from play, which means it's a possible Echo or a Maestro. Usually yeah. the case. Leaning on Maestro at the moment. Echo was, I think, last season a bit more banned yeah. than Maestro for sure. Uh, but definitely seems to have swung the other way around. And there he goes. Poor Maestro. Three M named operators. There they go. Maglaz. Yeah, poor Maglaz. <laughs> tips. Tips OTS. Maglaz. Maglazzy. Glassy McGlass face. That's right. That's his name. Imagine. Oh, man. So, you know, these, these sort of trends where people are like, hey, we're just going to leave it up to the public to vote for a name uh, for, you know, something new that we're making. What if, and just if, Ubisoft, I know you're listening because it's on your time zone. What if we had the community pick an operator name for a new operator? It's Off a, McOffice. And we, then we just end up with 4chan involved, and those those kind of polls <laughs> never go well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was watching some internet historian kind of videos today, and yeah, those polls. Yeah. yeah. They are. You know, we got to teach people how to Pokemon go to the polls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just make the polls a Pokestop. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to see the, uh, the, the Clash fake, of course, again. I think that does work a bit better at the beginning, the first round, just because they don't know what you're going to do, what strats you might have on board, and teasing in the first round. But at the same time, why would you not six pick to the clash? So good point. Usually, pretty good indicator of a fake. I'd also like to remaining. snap back to reality here, because um, no, I'm not going to continue. It. Okay. Oh, it goes gravity. So the Habana and the Thermite are in play, which is Attackers in clear contrast to what we saw on Coastline. Coastline is one of the only, I want to say the only map where you yeah. can run with no hard reach. Some Whereas, teams like redundancy on this, some teams don't. Indeed. And especially on Clubhouse, you can play, and you probably should play, with two hard reachers. Yeah. Why? The Habana clears out all the hatches, three of them. You'll yeah. need to take care of if you're attacking the church site. Boy, and of course, when you have those exothermic charges, it just allows you a bit more flexibility. Do you want to attack via the church wall, or do you want to push in, in this case, what England's trying to do, it's cleaning the top floor and saying, okay, maybe I need to push in solo from the dirt tunnel. I mean, it gives you that flexibility to get both the dirt tunnel wall as well as getting the church wall. But dirt tunnel pushes are so exceedingly rare at this point that it's just something that people don't necessarily think, oh, I need the thermite. More often than not, it's usually for the church wall. But it's also provided a little bit of a backup because the hatches are so important to yeah. attacking downstairs. Sometimes just having that redundancy can really make a difference. Although more often than not, you're usually not going to die trying to get down here and open these hatches unless there's some serious rope play going on upstairs. Yeah, in this case, um, when all fire players are focused on droning the top floor, it is easily droneable. If you're doing it solo, it's it's a nigh impossible task. The map, the map has so many layers to it that even though it looks like a small map on the outside, the amount of floors and the amount of um, the amount of 
just rooms that are in them, yeah. kind of are very Locking deceiving night. when it comes to the size of the whole map. I'm curious to see if we'll see Ghost trying to counter the Pulse play. Something we do see. Ooh, nice kill on him, my man. There goes Jaeger. Hopefully put up all, all the ADS. But something we have seen is floor bang attempts on Pulse if he's playing inside Arsenal from the IQ players. Not sure what Pulse is playing at the moment, but definitely does not look like Church. Smoke actually playing far back over here is going to actually finish off Hyper. Nice early kill. And that's going to take some utility off the board. Yeah, of course, uh, Hyper at least uh, on that uh, Havana store, oh. the, the Zofia starts to shine later on. Uh, there was a an attempt here to clear out the Thermite Charge, and indeed it was successful. I wonder if it was just a C4 that was thrown out. Not sure, yet he will oh. move in and Beastly will find him, even with the information that he was gathering. I'm not sure if the wall there in the hallway is uh, soft or not. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Riser just gonna push in. Crazy is ready by the bar. He'll spray in. He'll find one. He's gonna try to find the second as a thermite. England is falling up right behind Ghost. But all kind of stampers right there. There's attacker. not much action happening after that moment. 3v3 with 20 seconds on the clock. Someone has to take care of the bandit. El Bandito will get fired upon. And no, the headshot from Crazy will connect. Low on health. The fuser's dropped right in front of him. 10 seconds to go. Habana here. Fano will move in. As you see, the Gumas are doing work. And Acid will find the last two, bringing the pain. Rise will fall. And unfortunately, that mini bar spot is so difficult to deal with, which is why you see the thermites being brought for church walls, something that was part of the quote unquote cyclical meta, as Kix put it. Yes. And I think that was the specific example he was using when he first was using that, was that being something that has made a comeback. And I think it's just part of it's just so difficult to deal with someone playing behind that little mini bar. More often than not, teams will throw grenades and things like that over top of the wall. Yes. And that's a good way to deal with it as well because, well, a grenade is a good way to clear out the batteries and the bandit himself if you can time that well. In that case, did not seem like that was uh, their intention, and that could just be they didn't have anyone with grenades. They didn't bring a buck or a sledge. Because they didn't have those grenades, they couldn't do it. They could have potentially used the Zofi to bounce something over the top of the wall, potentially, if they were in that position, maybe a stud or something can. like that. But... Didn't end up being the case, and either way, lost the round on that attack, and that puts one on the side of Orgus, a big part due to Crazy just playing behind that minibar and just doing so much damage to that little peak hole, which something I've noticed has been used a lot more frequently, just the ability of taking advantage of the destructible of the minibar to use it to your advantage rather than having it used against you like you saw the Thermite trying to do unsuccessfully. They will, of course, have to switch bomb sites because they won that site. So we'll be going up to the uh, the next best. This was, now at the start of uh, the, the last time when this uh, map first got the revision, every yeah, team wanted to go to cash. Oh, that, wow. was, that was the Five site. That was definitely fallen off. That was back when uh, certain impact trick positions yeah. were very overpowered. And I'm so glad that they're yeah. not. I, I love the technicalities of these sort of um, things in the game, these sort of mechanics in, in the engine and in the build of the map. But some things are too good. And, you know, hopefully we'll get to see some of those impact positions as maybe some of you here that are watching are not familiar with those. And what better than a visual representation of exactly what impact tricks look like. So hopefully we'll be able to catch some of that in this uh, matchup here. Now, EMPs are brought and there you go. See them uh, try to open up the hole. And now the bandit has to decide between one or the other. Of course, both the Havana and the Thermite will be in play, and looks like the. How did it? It's possibly is it the X Kairos destroying the Thermite charge? Was it too like, close to it? It might have been is too that, close and too soon. Does that even happen? I I would imagine. I mean, it, it can, explodes. Can someone right now load up a game with a friend and try it out? I'm gonna try it when I get. Either way, though, that is now done though on that. I would need a friend to try it out though, so I don't know how you know easy or difficult that'll be. Yeah, there's there's your real challenge. <laughs> Well, either way, he's still got one extra thermic charge left. Should still be able to get it done easily if he needs to, but it looks like he's going to peel off instead. Blow it up. Try and have someone open up the uh, other half. Could go around for the repel and do the old upside down trick, but instead, nope. Ah. He's going to use what you usually use the second one for. Exactly. This Now, usually what would happen is that the Havana would use her set of Excaris on the top side of this, um, of this garage wall, which allows you to look all the way down into the window that you see is a rotation position from the garage inside of the server rack area. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting here to open up an extra wall, uh, especially in a position where 
Argus here will try to contest you very heavily. Now, Flash is going to get thrown in, and there you go. That's what we're talking about. My man will get one on England. Even do a decent chunk of damage here. Our Hyper is down to 75% HP. But, Devin, look at the time. Yeah, this is not looking good. 50 seconds in, you've already lost your Thermite. Did get Garage Control, though. Cost you a little bit, but... That is not a terrible position to be in, but they've got to start putting more damage on the site. Unfortunately, my man, able to rotate around to the oil pit, pretty much shuts that down, and that puts them back again on a huge problem with 30 seconds left, approximately. Not looking good. Yeah, the positive side here for Rise Nation is that they do have the Attack balcony wall opened up, but the diffuser is, has just been picked up, and they'll have to walk all the way through the garage area to try and get her done. Beastly will find one on Maman to turn it into a 3v3, but there's so little time left on the clock, and Acid will try to lay things as much as humanly possible. He'll win out the fight against Beastly, and then look back down as the smoke of Brian is not enough to clear out the planter. Um, Brian might have to push through this, and he should be able to find the kill here. Crazy will connect, and that's all she wrote for the round. You could barely walk through that uh, Xkyrus hole, but there you go. Fan will still get to kill. It's not enough to win the round for the team. And from below, the C4 will connect. I do believe it was from below. As Orgo is to put two rounds on the board, I have to say. Defense. Now, again, Devon, this is a more defensive side of the map. Yeah, it certainly the has been uh, at the moment. It is the most defender-sided map. The second most defender-sided map is Villa. I, so, don't, I don't have the stats in front of me to, uh, I, I to see how that today. pans out, but that sounds uh, intuitively right. I did check it today. So if only there was a pop-up that would tell me, hey, you're wrong. <laughs> I love being wrong. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing with every day that I'm not working is working on that for you. We never stop working. Right. Attackers We're need calls. to locate and defuse as many bombs yeah, as they can. Definitely. Well, now that they've won two bomb sites, they have to go to their third. I imagine uh, they would prefer not to play gym bedroom if they could help it. But in this case, bar is so uh, undesirable at the moment that uh, this is better than that for sure. This has just attacker. become a very difficult one to defend, as you mentioned earlier, partially because of the impact trick not working as well as it originally did. Leaves you in a tough spot because we've seen how crazy can kind of get pushed off his ability to try and bandit trick walls. And that's what the castle barricade there on the gym door is for. This helps stop that my man putting that ADS right there as well to try and stop them from sending anything flying in to deal with that castle barricade. Because once that is down, crazy will not be able to try and bandit trick this. Now you will see some teams put up deployable shields and such to try and help with that as well to provide some element of defense. It is not always the most effective, especially if uh, often there is a Zofia on board and it occasionally Ashes as well. Definitely things that can destroy that castle barricade remotely. In this case, this is some people have asked, what do you see breach charges used for in Pro League? And this is an example. Castle barricade windows, because you don't expose your feet, floors, things like that. Zofia, IQ, and uh, some of the other operators, Twitch as well, will often bring those. You see it's, a ton of those, for example, on Coastline. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was no. better than having to use the Zofia's actual other utility that now can be used for the doorway instead. So it's a good, good way to double up on the utility as well as just having an extra backup. I mean, it was also the case they could have had, uh, you know, Vandal do it if they needed to, things like that. But now that they've got that set up, they're going to oh. thatch with this, try and stop Crazy from doing his thing. They just keep an eye on the window, but they've got to watch Cash Window as well because that's where the cross can come from. Now, I mentioned before uh, some overpowered positions with impact tricks, and this was one of them where you could impact um, all the way up the uh, the wall, so leading into Jacuzzi. And that was definitely a position that made this site so incredible yeah. to attack. It was so difficult. And the change that made it so you can't impact this. And also, you saw downstairs in the previous round, the Thermite was trying to open up the, and successfully open up the um, the garage. Well, you could impact through those. And that was in the past. Now you cannot. Yeah. So I'm very glad about that. Changes acid. We'll get shot down by uh, Hyper. And that's a pretty good bit of play here. Yeti low on health at the same time. So Rise looking pretty good. Yeah, that was a good start for them. Take it down acid early. Managed to get crazy off his spot, and Yeti being in a tough spot as well. But he's able to still play over on cash site, fairly uncontested, surprisingly. They just walk into the bedroom. This is a bit of a difficult situation, and they'll get the, the shot. Hyper will find two and three as well with the Sofia. Now 5v1, Beastly will find the last one. Yeti won't go to 
beautiful play here from the Zofia that just absolutely demolished everyone. And really, it just came down to the defense not really knowing what was going on. They were just kind of dazed and confused and set in one position and all looking towards a singular angle. And that's yeah. where the Zofia pounced. I'd almost have liked to see uh, some better attempts at runouts or, or things that could really help equalize it because stacking up in the bedroom doesn't usually do you a whole lot of good with so many windows and access points. And, well, not enough people wanted to push Yeti for him to get a whole lot of mileage out of being on the cash side. He said, I'm trying to peek that window at the end, try and do what he could. But the thing is, of course, that was the only bomb site they haven't successfully defended. And I think they were expecting to potentially lose that as well. So while that was Rise Nation able to finally get a point, they go back now to having to fight Defenders potentially the other side. But as I mentioned before, the downside uh, for defense in the new format is you may have to defend your third bomb site twice. So that that more so affects Oregon, but it certainly affects here as well for teams that don't have a really great strategy for Jim. But you know they can go back to church and hey, if all you got was uh, you know four in the first uh, defensive rounds, that's still not terrible at all. Very true. True. Three rounds minimum. If you know, if you can get three rounds minimum on the defense, it's okay. But it's kind of your minimum. That was that was much more okay when it was a, a three to two when it switched sides. Of course. Very true. Now that you can go to a tie, which we saw ties at the half as well as ties in the finish earlier. So you're, you're looking pretty much for those four two. For yeah. Four two by the end of the, have their for the end of the Attackers half. Objective so. is to locate yeah, a bomb and defuse it. As you said, this being defender sided, you even more so need at the very minimum three on your defense. Well, Hyper, again, on the Sofia in the round. Yeti running the pulse, as we saw him to early on. Uh, the very first round, as mentioned, Ergos are able to play back down on the church. Just one. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good round for them, I have to say. It's just the way that they're able to, to play behind the bar. It really gave Fry's no opportunity to find picks that they were they sorely needed yeah. for the push. I can imagine they're going to try and do something about that this time, but again, they didn't bring anyone with grenades. I mean, in the past, IQ had had grenades, but not in the current iteration, which means they don't have a ton that can huck over top of the uh, wall to take the back of that minibar. So you they're going to have to find a different way to deal with it. In this case, hatches, of course, getting opened. No reason not to get those open nice and quick unless you're really struggling to deal with a roamer in cash, but they will do so. I'm curious if England has already used his on Dirt Tunnel as well, which we didn't seem to do much with, but oh. an early kill makes me think. Uh, no, I was going to say maybe he did, but instead it looks like he got one down the hatch, and that's crazy down. That was the big problem behind the minibar last time, which means maybe now Brian will take up his mantle, but certainly won't be doing any kind of tricking to stop that wall from getting open. I'm sure if the bandit there was trying to be through the open hatch, Definitely it would be a questionable decision in the meantime, but because the band is now dead and because there's EMPs Attack available here beastly, this might direct Rise Nation to a church push, which is a yeah. standard play. Absolutely, and especially with uh, the pinch here potentially coming out from Hyper to put a lot of pressure here on the backside of church, but my man winning the fight yet again against Hyper. If, uh, he, if he doesn't get taken out, that's going to make it very attack. difficult to push church. How did the Sofia Gizmot pop and have no effect on the game? The, uh, he just doesn't feel it anymore, you know? He's numb to it. <laughs> numb to the pain, and there you go. Brian bringing the pain. One kill and the second to dispatch the IQ. Beautiful play there by the smoke. Beastly and Vandal, last two alive. Unfortunately for Ryze, they were not able to capitalize on the advantage that they had. And my man will go down, but not before doing a ton of damage to Vandal there in the back. My man trying to walk back and at least... <laughs> Trying. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not opened all the way to the floor, it looks M like. And Maybe if you got fit with R6, that would go. have been possible. We should have been doing some sit-ups. All right, Beastly will walk in, and just through the main staircase, we'll be able to watch him there. Brian will finish off Vandal as he was down on the floor, and he'll find the next one as well. Brian, beautiful 4K to end the round, and there you go. Man, that was beautiful play. Well, speaking of Brian taking up the mantle of crazy there, he certainly did the job. Yes. So, nicely done holding down Church solo pretty much at that point. I though my man did a very nice job as well from blue as long as he could. Put some hurt on as many as he could before he got taken down. Unfortunately, just could not crawl his way to safety to try and get up and get some more. Either way, though, that puts a third on the round for Orglis now, who, uh, by the community vote, were not expected to be doing this well, I don't think. But... We'll see if they can get cash again. If they can, that, again, puts them in that good 4-2 spot going to the side switch, at the very least. 
That's assuming they lose Jim. But of course, if they lose cash this time, I imagine they will just play cash again. They will not be able to go back to church, but they will also then, in that situation, not have to play Jim or Bar. So, either way, it's not the worst situation to be in. It's, I, I mean, at that point, as long as you can win cash one of the two times, you still go with 4-2 into the second side. So, they're not in a bad position at all by being able to consistently win church and cash the first time. Yeti going to be on this uh, dock here. We'll see if Crazy is able to do much about the wall. Although I imagine this time they might try and be a little more careful about yeah, making sure their Thermite go. Charge goes off, which might make yeah. Crazy's life a little bit harder. Five seconds remaining. I wonder how Yeti's going to set up his uh, bulletproof camera. And you hear him just doing it right now? Yeah. Yeah. Recovered their little screws. Going. So Attackers that's just to, to, to watch in case somebody wants to uh, destroy the wall from the construction area. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you very much, Marcy. Highlighting it. So good. It's very helpful. We'll see Ghost at least looking for what utility is going to be in the garage. That's going to be helpful for anyone trying to push the garage, as we did see a push for a garage happen last time. Seem able to identify also whether or not there's anything like ADSs potentially stopping any nades or anything like that from going. And we used to see a lot of people trying to push the bandit off by opening up the window first. Acid actually playing further over into the bedroom here. And yet he playing what he was doing last time in the garage, but a little more uh, standing up looking for anything he can find first. Just running in here, nothing out of the ordinary really, just making sure there's nobody sitting in the side of the logistics office. Hyper has already come in from the opposite end of the map, which means he'll be able to pinch out any defenders that are playing in the bedroom, and in this case, Corliss have had to fall back, and have to worry about that sort of thing, and of course, the wall on the other side of it, well, it contains his own teammates. And that's trying to push his opponents back, just in case they'd like to get aggressive. Bomb now, by you know, you'd like to have Rebound. Claymore that's just protecting your back. There's a minimum Reach of flank watch, but on top of it now, you open up with the breaching charge, the soft wall that is still set by Orglis, so it means now rotations between these two positions are possible. Extra angles that are now given to Rise Nations, just in case they'd like to play against their opponents in this sort of position. There you go, you can have multiple angles. Vandal will try to use one to his advantage as well. EMPs are gonna be thrown in as England will set up with his Thermite Charge. There's somewhere you can still impact Trick. And actually, he was, was he crouching or did I miss see it? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure if he was crouching because or not, but. if he crouched, it should, it should work. That's like the, the impact should not function. There goes all that money. Mm, Boy, there you go, Brian will find Ghost. Problematic here is the uh, IQ was shot down. At least, um, you'll see, okay, there you go. That's the fix. S Kairos on the bottom floor, the bottom side of the floor, uh, which obviously won't allow you to use the thermite. You just can't repel through there, but Hyper on the floor, he'll find one. He'll just dispatch Brian, which means the smoke will, will no longer be in play. So will afford Vandal a possible way to rotate into the bomb has been located. site. But my man is ready for the long way rotation. Oh. He's just around the Claymore, and they don't know about it. Acid will get one. My man right up behind. He'll spray to the Havana. He'll take one. Can't find the second, though. Enough of delay. We'll just have to see. 15 seconds on the clock. Zingling will get one. Flash in. Bandit will turn away, Acid will spray in, but Hyper will win that, this one out. Crazy with one, and right above, up the desk, down on the floor. That's the Zofia, will spray him in, and, and Yeti will get her done. Hyper has been eliminated, and wonderful play there from Orglis. I have to commend the flank from oh, yeah. the uh, from the Jaeger. That, that Claymore, man. Yeah, that, that Claymore placement unfortunately kind of cost him the round or cost the uh, the attackers the round. I mean, had he been able to get two, that would have been even uh, even more of a problem. Thankfully, they weren't stacked too close together. He was able to get the one at the very least. But had there been two much closer together, I think that would have been a much shorter round. But time being so low was the problem. That's the problem I have with making that attack on that side the way they were, is that you, you get stuck so often, just standing. You're all stacked up in one room, standing around trying to fight it. Of course, the problem with attacking the other side is you very often have to get garage control. And I think they just did not feel like contesting Yeti or dealing with my man's rotations around like they had previously. So it was just, you know, they made their choice, and unfortunately, it did not work yet again. So that 4-2 advantage minimum here going over to Orglis. Could be a 5-1 if they're able to make Jim work this time and maybe, as you mentioned, be maybe a little less confused as to what to do 
once they lose that wall. Because you pretty much got to plan on losing the wall. In fact, they've done exactly that by not even bringing a bandit this time. This time, Crazy's going to be on Castle, which they had a Castle last time, but they've shifted up the rolls a little bit. Yet he's going to be bringing the Echo. Now, the upside of the Echo is he can play offside a little bit more. So talking about people kind of getting trapped in the side and not being able to play too far off. He can do exactly that. We had Yeti last time on the castle, and he was playing over in cash. Instead, this time we could have uh, the Echo playing anywhere that he feels like he can be relatively safe, that they're not going to push, and just play the Echo drones from there. And thankfully, with two of them, as long as he gets them kind of somewhat in place ahead of time, puts him in a good spot to be able to do something once that wall comes down. I would like to highlight uh, a thing here. As usual, we're breaking records here in Pro League as um, match number two, Reciprocity versus SSG on Coastline. The 6-6 six -six tie, the first one of the season. Not only was it the first time uh, that we get a tie, but also Rampy, with the 22 kills he got, breaks the record. Wow. For the maximum amount of kills in one map, where Pengu previously held it with 21 total kills, but that was on the older format with less rounds. Yeah. But still, in total, it does stand. But. England wow. will be the first one to fall, and that is a huge loss. Yeah, you gotta wonder how that was uh, done, but I gotta imagine it was possibly a run out onto him. I mean, I can't imagine you got that angle through that drone hole to get that kill, but either way, that's the third right down. So we were talking about, oh, they have to deal with the wall coming down, and Attackers what a problem that's gonna be, and, and they're adjusting to deal with it. Guess what? Wall's not coming down now, unless Vandal's able to open it with his ex Kairos, which is likely, to be fair. There's not a lot they can really do to stop it, but. Forcing them to have to use that redundant utility they brought means uh, x Kairos they cannot use elsewhere. Yeti, still playing in cash room, has taken a bit of damage again. He needs to not overextend himself because the utility he's going to get out of those yokais. But no, he's playing a dangerous game trying to use this pixel peak. Yeah, it is a very dangerous game. And again, you're playing a highly technical operator that really gets you into his zone as the round progresses, you really don't want to die early on here just because you want it to peak against your opponent. I can see why they put him on castle before. <laughs> it would make sense. Well, just because he's he's a very oh, aggressive yeah. player, and that's what happens. Unfortunate. Yeti will get shot down here. Uh, still, still advantage. Oh, for Ryan was. Now, for, <laughs> was an advantage <laughs> for them. Bomb Brian will be fell yet again. Acid. Pushing in is crazy. We'll find one kill going in for the reload. Acid holding on to Hallway. Let's now have to go for the quick peek. He's got one spot, but quickly runs away. He'll try to deny the plant. And no, Vandal will be stopped in his tracks. Hyper will find one. Diffusers on the floor and spotted by Crazy. No more impact grenades to use on the floor as the IQ will run into a goo mine. Ghost will be stopped for just a second. Run all the way back. Hyper is holding on to the cross angle. What will die? No! Oh, the Ghost! The Why are you planking place? there? No, Hyper will have no. to peek in. He still has one Gushmot to play with, but the advantage is all for Crazy, and he'll win it out! Orglis will take five rounds on the defense. What a mishap! Rise Nation had it all! Hyper was playing so well that round, and he just had to go with the throw by moving into that corner, the oh, one fine. place. You had it. You can you, see the one place. You had the Zofia well, watching the rotation. Why? I know, that was, it was literally the place where he could not see. The place where you were going to plant the diffuser, you were pretty much guaranteed to kill him with a crossfire if he went for it. Well, that was uh, not a great round. For no, that was Sorry. as disappointing as it gets. Crazy going to be switching from the Jackal to the Capital and then back to, there to the Ash instead. Something he had played quite a bit of in the past. Church going to be, of course, the first bomb site and potentially Attack one of the last the bomb sites they get to play here as there might only be two more rounds left for Rise Nation. But this being a defender-sided map, as we were saying earlier, not as big a surprise to see the five rounds could absolutely come sweeping back the other way for Rise Nation. At least they were able to get one on their attack. Unfortunately, the fact that they rolled to secure, secure their gym second time. I mean, that, that uh, early kill on the England certainly helped, I guess. But, mm -hmm. but just Hyper coming through the windows was certainly such a big play. That just, it was disappointing to see it end the way it did. Either way, we'll see how they defend this bomb site. We'll see if Vandal playing, for, perhaps, for example, behind the minibar will be a big factor. But the, the attackers of Orgus also going with the same double hard breacher and Thatcher strategy that we saw Rise Nation going with on their attacks. 
Whether they will use one on the dirt tunnel is yet to be seen. But uh, it definitely seems like if you have an extra one that you for sure won't need, I guess it's there's no reason not to. You see the holes being opened there. As Marcia was just highlighting above the hatch in kitchen are going to make it much harder for people to open that up if someone's ready and uh, able to impact trick that, which is yet another spot on this map where impacts can make a difference. In mm -hmm. this case, instead of against Thermite Charges, it's going to be mostly against X Kairos, but that is an old trick that teams should be ready for. But uh, you never know. It is worth opening up those holes potentially, though, just to give yourself the option and to make the Havana that much more cautious. Well, crazy so far. Not tossing that caution out the window. Nope. Uh, he's just going to drone in, make sure there's nobody around to blindside himself and his opponents. So again, Argus are two rounds away from potential victory, and they would like to seal the deal ASAP. Interesting to see Yeti well, on the, uh, the Thatcher, because he used to be such a, a buck main. First team, he's definitely shifted rolls around. No, I'm not, not sure side. about the Oh, oh can he land it? Oh, it'll oh. take down the Xkairos, but... It's not enough to get the kill on Havana. As I'm not sure if a C4 expended for that is worth it. The impact grenade is definitely a better alternative. Yeah. It won't be enough. Nope, looks like it didn't work out that time. It was able to hit enough by Xkairos. And now you have Thermite who could open that third hatch if they need it. And a reminder, you need to, to hit at least half of your Xkairos on uh, the hatch to destroy it. I believe it was four? It is four. It, yeah. it was, I believe, uh, I think all of them or five before and uh, yeah four is definitely a lot more fair just because there are issues where maybe you hit part of the floor or something like that or you, you know let just randomly bounce yeah you just don't want to end up with a situation where issues like that but nice now, angle being open this is what i don't like yeah this is what i don't like that wall yes and the problem is the pulse is right behind the reinforced wall in the mini bar which you know you already see the lesions setting up for the defense there but orglis can at any point here just walk into that beast and that's like this? exactly what they're gonna do. But no, go for the play. No, cover, acid. cover him. Cover your teammate. He'll find one. There you go. That's Ghost out of play. Can he watch the second? Two. Yes. Oh, my man and crazy will get a kill each as well. Diffusers now set. C4 will miss in the back. Hyper will take extra damage. Just both of them will go down a Yeti and crazy. Flawless. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw the Reddit post literally before we came into the office. And I'm like, yes, we cringe every time this happens. And there you go. That's why. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, but it's very easy to deny, you know, anybody wants to go for a church play with a thermite, you know. But no. More often than not. Yep. That's not reinforcing that side plays against you. Yeah. It's just you see exactly why there's there's no real variation to it. It's That gets opened by Ash, and people go just running on in. Ready to kill. It was two, three speeds running in there, one of them getting the plant down too, so they weren't able to adjust. And so Rise, seeing the writing on the wall that this match is almost over, decides, you know what? Throw caution to the wind. It's bar time. We need a drink after those <laughs> oh, yes. last seven rounds. Um, reminder that these two teams faced off in the final play day. That was exactly. a, a very well known play day. So it was yeah. definitely one that did they, not they, go well for Rise Nation. They played on this exact map. Yeah. And this is a weak map for Rise Nation. Yeah, it was a, it's definitely a repeat of that. Or, uh, or list, rather. Definitely seem to have stepped up their game since then. Seems to be working good. Hyper actually going to be playing the, uh, the first Alibi. The match here, interesting choice. Hmm? Something we do see occasionally, especially for roamers who want to play very heavy upstairs. It offers you the ability to make it much more difficult for them to pin down exactly where you're playing at. But also, you can use Prismas very defensively on site. It, it really does allow you to be very flexible. Like, yeah. And the one in the window is always a pain to deal with. Exactly. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. So no prism has actually been used here. Yeah, I'll probably put it in front of the, there we go. In front of the windows. It's Just so you can't really shoot at the. Exactly. The it, it, it makes it it makes that room that much easier to deal with as well because if they take any shots through the window at you, they're gonna get marked. All right, Yeti will move on in now. Of course, this site is not really played. Yeah, I think it's the correct. I think way it's been played once, once or twice. I think maybe twice, but I, I don't don't quote me on that. I'm I'm not 100. percent But it was a problem. Like, you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. I I would mind if you were gonna pop up one of those for me. Thank you. Oh Thank no, you. my man, struggling a little bit to get in the hole. Finally, just opens up another one. Short Remember time. the days when Buck would just he was kind of not able to hope open up anything really mm -hmm. worth going through. That's before the shotgun changes. 
Yeah. yeah. It's definitely very, very nice to be able to open those. Now, he's going to start to identify at least where one of the players is. So, open the side of the wall. There you go. He can just walk on in. Or try to see, you know, if he can do some damage on the opposite end. Problem is still with a lot of sites like this, you know, if you're not bringing a shield or anything similar, um, you know, you're going to need to be uh, careful. You need to clear out the top floor before you go down. Now, see the alibi in the castle playing close to one another. And of course, my man will open up an even bigger one to try and move through. Uh, so far, no control on the bottom floor. Um, you already see crazy down there, but he's going to go to the top floor and maybe try to open up the hatch here leading into the logistics office. Nope. Things definitely seem to have slowed down on this attack now. They've, uh, I mean, they've got a lot of things open, but not really led to any kills or damage. And getting down to the minute mark, that's not a good position to be in for an attack that should be something that teams uh, should be accustomed to. But at the same time, probably don't practice a ton on attacking yeah. bar. So, Which is understandable why Rise Nation will play this site, because... This is their Hail Mary. This is their Hail Mary. Unfortunately, if they win it, then they still just are on match point. Okay. So. Fair enough. But at least they won't have to play this, you know, very close. Okay, Brian will go oh. and plant right by the smoke. and Sneaky. Yeah, he is oh. spotted by England, so should be able to shut him out here. There we go. Maneuver the yokai away, but I'm not sure if they were able to get it here. Maybe an EMP would be a nice thing to have. Crazy's holding off in the hallway just in case someone would like to push in through that. England will put his uh, yokai in a better position, but Beastly will go down. There is a bulletproof camera, but the yokai will go and be removed. That's two kills now for Orglis. Hyper will find one on Acid, and my man is down as well. Yeti with one on Hyper. Diffuse is going to get planted, and Crazy will finish it all. Orglis will take the win. 7-1. That'll make it two for the day. I didn't expect to see the Orglis Rise Nation match with the same scoreline as the EG Accelerate match. That is unexpected. And certainly breaks any streak that the community vote might have had. Yeah, I didn't... I would have gone more towards Rise, but then you saw the map and you're like, hmm. Yeah, not one they're great at. Crazy, though, definitely living up to his namesake. Not quite 21 or 22 kills, but 13, not bad, considering the lack of rounds being played. I have to say, we had two close games and then very quickly followed up by two very, very fast maps. I mean, I, I expected it to be a little little brisker in the second half, but not quite down to, what, 16 rounds between the two matches?